Hi, my name is Caroline Fennimore and I am going to give a quick overview on sampling for bovine abortion investigations in practice. Before we start, a little bit about myself. This is me and my 10-year-old cow, Pandy. I am a veterinary investigation officer and I work in Carmarthen Veterinary Investigation Centre and I'm a member of the Cattle Expert Group. Before becoming a VIO, I was in practice for 14 years, uh, the last eight years working in farm animal practice in West Wales. Right, so what is abortion? Well, we can define an abortion as expulsion of a foetus less than 271 days after service or less than 265 days after implantation of an embryo. And this is whether the calf is born dead or alive. So when do we investigate? Well, the individual farm and management system should always be taken into consideration, but it is suggested that an abortion rate of 2.5% is acceptable, so an interference level above 3% could be justified. The next question is why do we investigate? Well, current legislation requires anyone in charge of bovine animals to report any abortion to APHA within 24 hours, and this is for Brucella surveillance. It is also really important for the health and welfare of affected animals and may indicate wider issues within the herd, either due to disease or management. There is a significant cost to the farmer and this has been estimated at £650 per abortion, although it's likely to be a conservative estimate as this figure was calculated in 2007. Finally, it is really important to remember that many abortion pathogens are zoonotic, with particular awareness that pregnant women should not have contact with aborting cattle or associated material. There are many different causes of abortion and I'm not going to go through and list them all, but we can consider them in two categories. So we've got non-infectious, for example, genetics, trauma, toxic causes, including plants and drugs. And then the infectious causes. These are divided into bacterial, viral, protozoal and fungal. This graph is taken from our VIDA database, which includes diagnoses from APHA and SRUC. It illustrates our most commonly diagnosed causes of abortion with Neospora, Salmonella Dublin and Bacillus lichenoformis as our top three. During an abortion investigation, it is really important to get a detailed history. And this slide gives an outline of what to include. We need to know if the herd is dairy or beef, how far in calf the dam is, age and parity of the dam. We want to know the timeline and the details of previous abortions and whether dams are unwell. Are they housed? What are they being fed? And is it a closed herd or do the cows have contact with other stock? Vaccination and health status and any other relevant information such as footpaths on the farm or recent management changes. So let's look at what samples we need to take. You should examine the placenta for signs of placentitis or fungal plaques and the external fetus looking for signs of dystochia or injury or skin lesions. You can estimate the age of the fetus by measuring the crown rump length if necessary. To stabilise the carcass and help with visibility, then incise the axillae and inguinal regions as shown in this picture and disarticulate the hips. Then you can open up the abdomen and thorax and take the relevant samples. While taking samples, record any unusual findings or pathology. It may be helpful to take photos. These are the samples we need. Placenta with cotyledons. We do an MZN smear on this, looking for Q fever and screening for brucella. Fetal stomach contents. This needs to be taken aseptically, and the easiest way to do this is with a vacutainer into a plain tube. We do culture for bacteria and fungi on stomach contents, which is why we really don't want any contamination. Fetal fluid. This can be used for serology. Spleen or thymus for PCR testing for BVD. We also need hindbrain for PCR testing for Neospora 
and finally kidney for lepto PCR. If the fetus is fresh and not autolyzed, then samples can be retained for histopathology. We only process histo if further investigation is necessary or for confirmation of neospora pathology. Ideally, we need one centimeter cubed of tissue in 10% formalin at 10 times the volume of tissue. Half the brain should be included, split down the midline, placenta including cotyledon, and then a selection of all organs. All fetal brains must be examined for hydrancephaly or porencephaly. These present as dilation or cavitation. Presence of these could indicate blue tongue, Schmallenberg or BVD, and any cavitation needs to be reported to APHA as suspected blue tongue. Depending on what tools you have available, the brain can be examined by either removing a flap of skull at the back of the head, as shown by the images on this slide, or you can simply split the skull straight down the midline. These pictures demonstrate porencephaly and hydrancephaly, but it can be really, really difficult to distinguish between the two. So samples should be put in leak-proof sample pots and labelled, and can either be posted to the appropriate lab or dropped in at your local VI centre please check with your local VI centre for details. The abortion testing package is TC0015. There are also abortion packages for maternal serology. Package A tests for lepto and neospora, package B for lepto, neospora, BVD and IBR. I wanted to highlight the value for money for an abortion investigation. The current cost is £81.60 per submission, but if we were to charge all the tests individually, then the average cost of testing for an abortion PM would actually be £448. Finally, I just wanted to focus on our services available to practices out there, including the Animal Disease Testing Service, ADTS, so this is our online submission service where all reports are electronic and address labels are automatically generated so postage is free. Please contact your local VI centre if you've not already registered or if you need any help. There are always vets available on the phone to give support and advice. We also have loads of online resources on APHA Vet Gateway, including the Diagnostic Sampling Handbook, Dashboards, Reports and Publication. We are also more than happy to discuss and offer farm visits and vet or farmer talks. So thank you for listening and please don't hesitate to get in contact with your local VI centre if you have any further questions.